Awesome. First off, uh, my name is Ray Ostrowski, um, defensive coordinator at Lakeshore High School. Just want to start by thanking uh, Coach Banster for this opportunity. Um, you know, wonderful opportunity to uh, to spread the message to the school and also, uh, you know, share some of my ideas for the 3-3 stack. So just some things I'll talk about in today's presentation. Uh, I want to focus on our lane reads and our run fits. Um, open and close windows, our readers versus our fitters. We'll talk a little bit about our fronts, our stunts, and then I'll, uh, I'll share a little bit of film as well. So that's kind of where we're at. Just to uh, kind of touch a base and going through some of my information, uh, you know, I like to always share a slide with contact at the beginning. Um, as I said, my name is Ray Ostrowski, defensive coordinator, inside linebacker coach, um, as well as uh, in charge of box play. Uh, Lakeshore High School is located in St. Clair Shores, Michigan, um, a, I guess, northeast suburb of Detroit, city of about 60,000 people. Um, my email, uh, rayo3313 at gmail.com. And then, of course, uh, you know, all the other information as well. I'll have a slide at the end with that contact. You know, as I say at the bottom, feel free to reach out, text, call, direct message. I'm, I'm always willing to share any ideas, uh, you know, and certainly bounce my ideas around. Uh, just some, you know, it's always important for me to kind of give credit to where credit's due. Um, you know, again, I've probably taken at least 90% of what we do in our 3-3 from others. Um, you know, whether it's at Glacier clinics, online clinics, you know, this whole COVID experience has been wonderful in the sense um, that we've all had the opportunity to kind of look at what others do, reevaluate what we do and see what works best and, and maybe what's not as effective. So just some guys over the years, um, I've kind of taken some ideas from, you know, certainly Nate Alba, Chief, Chief Pigskin, they do a wonderful job. Um, Chad Hatlett over at Glenbard West, Andy Jackson, Adam Carter, if you want to hear a great podcast, you know, um, Compete with the Stack is probably one of my favorites um, out of Grayson, Georgia. Phenomenal, phenomenal talent down there. Uh, great resource. Kyle Ralph um, down in Indiana, Jeremy Cordell, um, Ryan, Steve, those guys, uh, again, you know, some I know on a, on a, I share ideas with talk with on a fairly close level. Others, you know, they might not know it, but I've taken a ton from them. So I, I certainly appreciate it. Just some personal info about myself. Um, you know, entering my 11th season coaching, seventh being a defensive coordinator um, in some capacity. I am a Lakeshore uh, High School graduate, 2005, um, played in, uh, and, and graduated from Saginaw Valley State University um, up in Saginaw, Michigan. Uh, this is going to be my entering my ninth year of teaching, so I'm also a teacher. Um, I've done some strength conditioning back in social studies, teaching some psychology now, so really goes along well with the coaching. Um, also, you know, I've coached at four different schools, a couple stints at Lakeshore. Um, I've lived in Kansas for a year down in Garden City, so done a little bit of everything. Um, I'm t I used to be considered a 4-2-5 four, uh, coach. You know, I was always an even front guy. Um, grew up in the 4-3, playing some Tampa 2. Um, and it's funny, you look back now, and, you know, what made me go to the 3-3 three, three was certainly just the versatility. You know, I was losing some of those big interior kids. And, you know, we kind of dabbled in it and almost jokingly, we had said we should try to go to it, started to research it, uh, you know, kind of looking at some of those guys I mentioned before and, uh, and certainly ended up making the move. And, and then it's ended up working out well for us. Just a little bit about Lakeshore before I get into uh, anything else. Like I said, we're a population of about 1150. So, um, you know, I guess a mid range school. We're technically in the second highest classification um, here in the state of Michigan, uh, what we consider Division two. Uh, like I said, St. Clair Shores has about 60,000 people in it. Um, however, there are three schools in St. Clair Shores, um, and they're all separate districts, which makes it kind of an interesting um, ordeal. I've never really been around somewhere. It's such a close area, uh, all within three or four miles of one another, um, and they're all run by separate organizations. So we're a member of the Macomb Area Conference up here, uh, the Max and Mega Conference. You know, it has 35, 40 teams in it. Um, we are in now, we just got moved up. So we will be in the third largest conference or uh, division of that conference. And uh, just for program, we're down to two levels. We lost our freshman team a couple of years ago. Um, right now, we're estimating about 80 kids in the program. The number could go up. Uh, again, brand new head coach. So I would anticipate these numbers being a little higher, but that's where we're at. We're trying to get that third program back. Just some pillars. So whenever we talk about success um, and, and, you know, moving towards success, you have to identify that what your goals are as a program. Um, our motto, again, win at everything. You're going to see it on everything we do. It's something I've taken with me to a couple schools now. Absolutely love it. And, and I think there's always a misnomer about it, what it means, what it represents. 
to me, it's it's winning in the classroom first, winning in the weight room, winning on the practice field. Um, you know, support you support your fellow team, uh, your fellow teams at the school. Um, you know, the cheerleaders, the volleyball team, go to those events, have fun, and of course support them because they'll support you. And then last but not least, of course, Friday night, payday, right? Game day. You want to make sure you give it your all. Um, our old model, relentless pursuit. It's kind of what we use on defense, particularly constantly getting to the ball. I'm a big believer. If you run the three, three, you have to be aggressive. You have to be able to move. Um, so again, you know, we're not looking for any whales. We're looking to beach whales. Okay. We do that through a lot of movement, uh, you know, generating toughness competition. Those things are staples in all programs. Uh, you do that through practice daily. So we practice competing. Everything we do has a purpose and you want to win. Okay? That's the goal. If you're going to win, you're going to win at everything. Uh, and then, of course, doing things with a purpose. We do it because we can control it. We don't worry about the opponents. We worry about us. Just some uh, our goals defensively. Absolutely love this. So watching the Army-Navy game, one of my favorite games every year, being an old Veer guy, um, you know, Navy had kind of their goals. And, and I'm not a huge goal person per se. Um, so I love this motto. Took it straight from them. Okay, Their goal was they need six combined of these each game. Three and outs, fourth down stops. And turnovers and if you can get to that mark of six that magic mark you have a 94 percent chance of winning the game okay and to me that means you're going to win more often than not in high school football okay so that's what we're trying to do get the sum of those three categories to six or greater and we're going to win okay you have to do that through practice it can't be just you talking about it you physically have to practice it every day um, so whether that's half line, whether that's team, whether that's a strip drill, it does not matter. You have to emphasize what you want. Okay, so get six, kind of being our defensive goal and motto. Just my quick philosophy, um, you know, for anyone with a 3-3, you want guys that are willing to run. Okay? And people run in different ways. Some people will two gap, one gap. For the most part, we're a single gap team. We will do a little bit of double gapping. Um, at the same time, we got we need guys who can play. So if you're asking me for an ideal nose, it's someone who's stout, tough, particularly your wrestler types. I love them. They have great hands. They're able to stay low and get off the ball. Um, and, of course, play flat and pursue down the line of scrimmage. Our Mike, philosophically, is probably our best player overall. Has to be smart. Has to be able to read. Um, they typically stay a little bit further back in our stack intentionally so they can find that first a, or that first gap inside out, A to B to C, pursue and track the back hit. Okay, our bucks, uh, these are our inside stack linebackers. Uh, typically, our bucks and our ends are almost interchangeable. So, again, I'm not looking for someone who's huge necessarily to play end. I'm not looking for someone who's huge to play buck. Um, I need guys that are willing to do their job, play flat, um, pursue, uh, and, and, of course, go to their gap. We'll talk about the windows here in a second. So really, those two things are interchangeable. Um, if you're a little too slow to play linebacker and, and I guess, pursue, um, you know, you might graduate to defensive end. Okay? And we use a field end, a boundary end, a field buck, a boundary buck. Um, but again, typically our, our field players are a little bit faster. Our boundary guys a little bit slower, a little bit stouter. You know, and, and the idea is we work in unison. So that idea of e, plur, e pluribus unum, you know, out of many, one, that's our goal on defense. Just our position groups talk about how we do things. Um, we were not a field boundary defense before in the past. We flipped the strength. Um, we are now going to a field boundary defense. And again, taking some ideas from some coaches that are much, much better than myself. It just, it simply makes sense. You know, this being a, a year where we will be a little bit shorter on practice time because of everything that's taken place. We have to find some ways to simplify what we do. Uh, field boundary makes the most sense for me. So our D line, again, as I said, we have a nose and two ends. Our base is a, is a stack. It's pretty simple. We'll line up and head up fours and head up 40 techniques from the outsides. Um, from our outside linebackers, those inverts, what we call our dogs, um, our spider and our wasp, those strong and, and weak side field boundary guys. Um, and then last but not least, we'll uh, throw in our stealer, who's our free safety. Um, he, that's a very versatile player, typically, uh, you know, is one of the better players we have in our two corners. Okay, so that's kind of our position groups. Just like everyone, we use a pretty simple system. Um, you know, again, I'm not, I guess I'm not uh, Bear Bryant. I don't use the, uh, the sevens and all that good stuff as far as my gap alignment or gap numbering. Um, I just use a six eye, keeps it simple for the kids, a six, and then we'll spread out to a wide nine. 
But again, everything else pretty straightforward. Head up on a center being a zero, insert a shade being a one. We use two eyes, four eyes, um, so on and so forth. Okay, so nothing crazy there. Want to get into our lane read. So one of the things that makes our defense, I, I guess, a little bit unique is we typically don't ever practice plays. We just practice lanes. Um, and I find this easy, you know, what, being a high school coach, one week you'll play a wing T team. The next week you're playing a spread, no huddle, up-tempo uh, team. You know, the next week you're playing, uh, geez, we see everything. I mean, we see full house T. Uh, we see uh, unbalanced spread. We see it all throughout, a, a, you know, the course of a year in those nine weeks here in Michigan. So realistically, we just try to fit all our opponent plays into four lanes. Um, and this hopefully simplifies things for our kids. So we'll kind of get into those here individually in a second. So why teach those lane reads? It keeps it simple for our players, um, particularly our scout guys. You know, they don't have to learn um, a ton of plays per se. Just understand where that play is meant to hit. If it's inside a tackle, outside a tackle. If it's quick outside, if it's a rollout, um, we try to differentiate those things. And it keeps uh, the terminology and the, the plays themselves a little simpler. Um, takes away any confusion. Like I said, don't need explanations or names. Um, it allows us to fit our open and closed windows. And part of this presentation is certainly going to be talking about how we utilize those windows um, to be successful. It allows us to differentiate our readers from our wallers or our fitters, um, our readers kind of being our interior players, and those wallers or those fitters being outside. Um, you know, again, our, our stacks and then our inverts. Uh, those guys kind of doing their job. And that goes right along with our idea of our spillers and our forcers, right? Anytime you run a 3-3, you have to identify, are we going to box or spill? Um, personally, we're a spill team. And then, of course, what's the responsibility? What's the job of our force players? Who are our force players? We have to be able to identify that each and every play in order to be gap sound and to make this defense work. So again, for us, a lane zero, I'm, I'm going to have two drawings of this. One is a closed window. So CW is closed window. Um, a lane zero play for us is simply a drop back pass from a quarterback. Could be play action, could be three step, could be five step, could be from pistol under center. It does not matter. If it's a straight drop back from a quarterback, it's what we consider lane zero. Okay. So again, as our outside guys are reading the tackles, or I'm, yeah, the end man on the line, um, our bucks are typically reading through guard. Okay? Again, we will then, of course, get our drops, look to go match. We are a pattern match team. Um, look, I look to get outside of us. This is just drawn up with a base cover three. Okay. Um, same thing. We will also do this with an open window. So the previous look had our ends pinching inside to the B gap. Now we'll draw with our ends pinching outside or uh, looping outside to the C gap. Okay. So again, everything we do in a sense is that married relationship between our bucks and our ends. Um, you know, they do the opposite or the inverse. Okay. For that's their base assignment. And just to like show a little bit of film, I know it's small down in the corner, but again, this is what we consider a lane zero. We typically look to pressure um, and make those things happen. Okay, uh, a lane one play for us is an inside run of any kind. So if it's staying between the tackles, this is how we would look to fit it as a defense if we have a closed window. Okay, so now we have our end, in this case, our boundary end. That's pinching inside. We have an overhang offensive player in that fullback. So we have a threat or at least a, a heavy run threat. Um, so we know we're going to pinch inside, which is telling our boundary buck. In this case, we have to scrape paint. Okay? When we scrape paint, we have to be tight off the tackle. Okay? Again, if you're not tight, you're going to create wrinkles or vertical gaps in your defense. Okay, That's when the 3-3 three, three gets gashed. Okay? Of course, in this case, our wasp, that weak side invert, is our, our force player. Okay, so we can, I mean, in theory, we can force the ball to bounce outside. That's not the end of the world for this force player. However, he has to understand, I have to keep my outside arm free. I have to constrict and then expand down the line of scrimmage. Okay? So again, we want to force the ball to bounce. Okay? We want to be aggressive. Uh, at the same time, we don't want to fall off that magical cliff. And for us, that magical cliff is really the heels of the offensive line. Okay, we don't want to go more than a yard or two deep in the backfield because, again, that's where creases are created and we allow for offensive cutback. Okay, so, again, it's, it's important, even though we're talking you know, mostly box play here, that our force defenders do their job, they constrict, and then expand. Okay, again, have it drawn up with an open window. 
same kind of concept. Now, in this case, our ends looping to the outside C gap, which means our buck has to fast flow fit that B hard, especially if we know we have that, that overhang offensive player to his side. Okay, so again, make sure we're fitting. We put it back where it came from. Okay, we make sure we're gap sound and fit that. We know our mic will be fitting the first available window inside out. Okay, and again, I, you know, I try to attach some film here. I know it's small. We can enlarge it later. But again, what a lane one play will look like for us. Okay, and we try to be aggressive. Uh, lane two. So this is any kind of outside run that's coming outside of the tackle box. In this case, you know, a little bit different personnel grouping. You know, with some twenty one here. Um, so again, we're just looking to, um, in a sense, make sure we understand there's a tight end that creates an extra gap for us. Okay, in this case, we have the fullback or the H. Okay, that could potentially create another gap for us. Okay, so again, there could be some movement involved here for sure from the defense. Um, but realistically, it's the same principles. We have our force defender. Okay, we have to understand where our fits are. Okay, so if it's a closed window for us, our ends pinching the B. Okay, in this case, actually the, the C because we've uh, we've kind of moved over some, and then of course our our stack is going to be taking outside. Okay, so we'll talk about how we change things a little bit um, if we see if we have to shift. Okay, same thing goes here. This is a little more traditional, I guess you could say, um, with just the twins look. But again, you could see our force defender, okay, and how our stealer, in a sense, now runs the alley, okay, a little bit different. Again, this is an outside run, so something that's hitting outside. Um, could nowadays game could be power read, could be toss, it could be anything. Okay? Again, just kind of how we handle outside run. We look to string it out, okay, and then rally to the ball. Our idea is again, if we have fast offense or fast defensive players, we want the offense to run. And then, last but not least, probably what we see the least in today's game, you know, with all your RPOs, um, with all your spread, you know, we seem to be seeing less and less rollout. Um, but we do see it one or two times a year. Um, so we have to know how to defend it. We go back and forth about who's going to bring this pressure. Sometimes it's our Mike. Sometimes it's our it's our Buck. Um, but realistically, we know we have to pressure the situation to force a quick throw from the from the quarterback. Often we're trying to run some kind of a flood or levels concept on the outside. Um, so again, so we want to force a high school quarterback to make a hasty throw. Usually we want to force that throw underneath, right? That first five yards for us is a no cover zone. Um, but realistically, you know, when we're talking pass, we want the ball to be thrown underneath so we can rally to that. Okay. Same thing with our open window. Um, same look. So everything's drawn up to the open and closed window. It's important um, to differentiate between those two uh, because we will utilize both in our defense. Okay, so again, you can see if we see rollout, how we look to handle it, and then of course rally to the ball. Don't get beat deep. Pretty simple concept. Okay, so our base run fits in our keys. Um, you know, our box six, so to speak. You know, we like to add a seventh in our stealer and our free safety. Um, but our box six or our three D linemen, those three stack backers. Okay, as I said before, they are spill players. They're responsible from C gap to C gap. Okay, so we always try to make sure we're gap sound. Um, we always, first and foremost, you have to be gap sound. Okay, and again, it's important that we teach we are inside out downhill defenders. It doesn't mean we don't play flat. In fact, our D line does a ton in terms of playing flat. Um, but again, we are inside out first. You have to get downhill. So our, our front and our stunt, we use those open closed windows and that determines our fit for our linebackers. Okay? It makes it pretty easy for those stack guys back here. Um, they know where their base gap is pre-snap. Okay? Our inverts and our safeties, we know those are our force and secondary force defenders. Again, they're going to be willing to step up, um, force that ball to cut back inside. Okay? And then, of course, our Steelers, that free hitter, he's the guy who's unaccounted for. Some people call him an adjuster in a 3-4 or a 3-3. Um, for us, that guy, he can do a couple things. He can run the alley or he can defend against cutback. And depending on what we see from week to week, uh, we'll kind of change those responsibilities. So our readers versus our fitters. And I know this is a lot to take in, um, you know, when you initially look at it, but it's pretty simple for us. So again, our inside guys here highlighted in green, our, our nose, our mic, our stealer, those guys are readers, okay? And they read the triangle, just like most teams. Our guys read from guard to guard, okay, and we practice those reads each and every day. That's part of our everyday drills. Okay, the readers, uh, again, they are typically are your best athletes. Our nose is probably our best D lineman, always. Our mic is always our best linebacker, or at least fastest, most instinctual ball player. 
Um, so again, they're there for a reason. We try to, you know, utilize that to the best of our ability. Our stacks are, are typically, you know, also get a good athletes, particularly our field um, player. Um, but again, these guys are willing to get down and dirty and they need to do their job. Okay. So again, if we're, you know, practicing a closed window, we know we're going to be pinching inside. You know, our stack has to get down and scrape paint. We know what we do based on our call, based on the window we are looking to get. At the same time, we have to read things. So again, if we're in some kind of a loop technique and we're responsible for the C-gap and this tackle veers inside to climb, guess what? We need to constrict, take away the B-gap and reduce. It becomes a simple gap exchange technique. Um, you know, and I think most 3-3 teams use that in some way, shape or form. But again, when you get kids, particularly ninth graders that come in, um, it is key that you emphasize these points if you're going to be a gap sound defense. Okay. Um, just understanding our leverage, kind of talking about that as well. So our inside hip trackers, those guys who look to get downhill first are our inside here in red. Those box defenders, really the six or seven, if you want to throw in the stealer as well. Um, and then, of course, our outside hip trackers. So, again, these guys look to leverage back inside. There are force defenders, primary and secondary force. And, again, um, you know, we base out of a 3-3, three, three, obviously, from these drawings. Uh, we run some cover two read. Uh, we do a lot of things in coverage, um, but our base is, is cover three. Okay? So again, this is kind of what we'll draw most things up to, um, and it makes the force rules pretty simple for us. Okay, And then last but not least, you know, we want to force teams to, to bounce outside. Um, ideally, when we're talking about the 3-3 three, three looking to spill, we want guys to run east and west, right, horizontally, not north and south. Okay, so when we can force guys to run or bounce outside, that's a good thing for us. We will rally and make the play. Okay, ball carriers also have the choice to bang it back inside. Okay, they see the force player. They want to go back in. We have to be able to leverage that tackle. Um, and, of course, our bend cuts any kind of cutback. We have to be sound on the backside. Okay, our backside players have a huge and pivotal role. We were burned a couple games this past year where we, you know, we lost our backside pursuit. It got lost in the wash, so to speak. And again, we we're hit on big cutbacks. So if you are running the 3-3 three, three or the 3-5, three, you have to know how you're going to defend that, that bend, that bang, and of course, the bounce outside. Okay, so it's just kind of our leverage and what we do. Okay, talking specifically about our closed and open windows. Um, this is a huge part of what we do defensively. It's kind of our day one things that we teach. So what do those things look like? Um, whenever, whenever we go inside, we just call it a pinch technique. Okay? So pinch is a stunt for us, um, but realistically, pinch also means we are going to the B gap. Okay? So again, pinch is penetrate. Um, and then, of course, once you penetrate, if the ball is going away, flat pursuit. Okay? We emphasize penetrating and then flat pursuit down the line of scrimmage. Okay? Read your key. If you're pinching, that key is going to be that guard. If you get that down block, Guess what? You know, head on a swivel, ready to go, looking for any kind of polar or looking for ball to come across in some kind of, you know, zone read concept. Okay. Again, we're cross key and backs in this case. So pinch man has near back, uh, loop man has far back. Okay. Pretty simple. Okay. We'll play some games on the backside to account for quarterback. Um, but certainly, you know, if it's a pinch here, near back, uh, loop here, far back. Okay. And again, we try to use these windows to teach and keep things simple for our backers and for our ends, those stacks, okay, who, again, do the majority of the work in, in terms of setting the wall. Okay, so that's kind of where we're at um, and what we do. Just a little bit of film showing what we do and how it's utilized. Okay, again, we're going to get a nice heavy pinch here, scrape paint, rally to the ball. You know, again, I, I can't say we're the best tackling defense. That's been my point of emphasis this offseason. We, we miss a ton of tackles, probably because, again, we got some pretty uh, some kids that are pretty light in the pants playing defense. Um, but the reality is we rally to the ball. Okay? And, again, if you're going to run the 3-3 three, three or any defense for that matter, you know, rallying is key. It's, it's a double whistle in practice. It's emphasizing getting guys and numbers to the ball. It's good things happen. I can't tell you how many touchdowns we've scored defensively just by simply being around the ball um, and, and picking it up at an opportune time and, uh, and, and being able to run that thing back. Okay. Again, our open window, same kind of concept, only when now our, we know our end's going to be uh, looping to the C. And really, we call it a loop technique, but you're taking on half a man to the outside. Okay, so we're not looking to expand flat unless we get that reach block. Um, we know realistically we want to take on the outside half of the tackle now. 
So now if I'm that stack backer, that buck behind him, I know now in a sense I'm the pinch man. I need to make sure I read that guard all right, because that's going to be my action. We've also changed. So again, when we're looping, it's still far back, near back. But in this case, our end is responsible for the far back. Use the loop technique. Our buck's now responsible for that quarterback. So we're coming the line. We're doing what we have to do, reading, uh, reading anything that's coming to us with our head on a swivel. And of course, playing that inside out. And again, just to kind of draw up what it might look like, um, you know, for us defensively, or at least show some film, you know, we have a loop technique up top, looking to penetrate. A force player does a good job, gets the ball, we rally, and of course, we're able to make a tackle for a loss against a pretty good athlete. Okay, so again, that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to manipulate these windows the way we want to force the offense to have to move sideways. Okay, that's our goal. So our base fronts, okay, um, we'll get into how we call things, um, what we consider our base fronts. So we like to combine our base fronts um, you know, these things, uh, they, they essentially allow us to manipulate the windows the way we want. Okay. So we do a lot of pre, uh, snap movement. Um, you know, we'll do some things where we align in something, we stem to something else. We also do a few things where we stem and rattle. You know, we have some aspects to our defense where everyone stands and moves in past situations. So we try to do a lot, um, some bit of smoke and mirrors, you know, but again, realistically, you're going against high school linemen, high school linemen, you know, again, God love them, but, uh, you know, they're, they, they make mistakes just like everyone else. Okay. The goal is to make those kids have to talk, communicate and think, you know, I, I, being a teacher, I see kids all day, great at texting, great at sending snaps, but talking isn't always their strong point. So again, if you're not going to communicate, you're going to struggle against us, um, defensively. So our, you know, this forces those high school linemen to see a different picture each and every play. Um, it makes them make sure they're very sound in their rules. Uh, it also allows us to be very sound in our rules and keeps it simple. And then, of course, this allows us to be multiple versus our opponents. Um, we can adjust very quickly. Okay, so kind of getting into the meat and potatoes of what we do. Our base defensive formation out of the 3-3 three, three is what we call stack. Okay, so again, pretty simple. Uh, you know, just like a lot of people run it, we'll run head up four techniques from our ends, the zero from the nose. Our mic is typically stacked his base alignment, his heels at five, sometimes we move him even back to six so he can kind of get that free flow read. Um, of course, our bucks, typically their base alignment is at four yards, although there are times where there, there will certainly be closer. Um, typically, though, not too much deeper. Five yards is the deepest they would ever go. Okay, but that's kind of our alignment where what we try to do um, from our stack alignment. And again, everything is drawn up to strong right right now. Not that it would Okay, curveball, uh, one of our second fronts we like to use. So you will find some great teams. You know, Chad Hetley comes to mind, um, you know, over at Glen Bard West that are strictly read teams. Um, we have the ability to be a read team. We do not do it exclusively, um, but when we line up a curveball, we are in a sense reading that end. Okay, and it's pretty simple. I mean, again, we're in that five, that outside shade alignment. Uh, when we do that, our bucks will typically move in a little bit to an inside shade, that 40 eye. Um, and, you know, in a sense, I don't want to say that you become a box team, but it looks more like a box team. Okay? And, and again, you know, there's been times in the past when we had some pretty big players here at ends. Um, you know, sometimes curveballs will work the best because you could keep a fast player kind of locked up here inside. Okay? So, again, we are a spill team. Um, you know, that is clearly defined, but, you know, there are times where, in a sense, you might want to kind of box things up. Um, you know, we have that ability with this curveball front. It's pretty simple. Okay? And, again, you can tell where we're at. Our, sometimes our heels move a little bit uh, closer if we're those bucks. And, again, it's just so we can be stouter against the run. Same rules apply. Our fastball look. So something, you know, like many 3-3 teams, you know, start stealing this from Iowa State a few years ago when they started to go to some of their tight looks, um, you know, some of their three-high stuff as well. Uh, love this look, particularly against uh, spread teams, because again, you are forcing that ball to bounce quickly. If we are lined up inside, you know, we can still loop if we want to. More often than not, we're going to be pitched. So we're attacking and penetrating those B gaps. And this allows that ball to bounce outside quickly to our, you know, our, our overhang players or overhang or defensive players in this case, those stacks and of course our force players. Okay, and realistically, this is great if you're trying to force a spill. Um, we will shift to this late, penetrate, offensive struggle with it. Again, this is something you have to practice week in and week out. 
that stemming, that moving, once you've kind of mastered it, or at least gotten it to where it works for you, um, it's something you want to utilize. It's a real strength of ours running the three, three, our star look. So when we run what we call star, um, again, our ends stay in that fastball four eye technique. Um, our bucks will move up near the line of scrimmage. Okay. So realistically, we're almost outside of that end. Okay. And this allows us to do a lot of things. It allows us to twist. It allows us to bring some stunts. It allows us to send pressure and then drop out and bail. It allows us to bring pressure from one side and bail the other. Okay. So there's a lot that we get to do um, from star. Okay. Kind of our alignment. Again, we tend to move our mic a little bit further back when we're going to do this so he can get a clearer picture. Um, but realistically, you know, we have the ability to pinch, loop, slant, angle, all those things we can do um, from this look. Our field star, okay? again, we will just bring one side up and play games. The wonderful thing about the 3-3 three, three or that odd front is that, you know, you can bring pressures from a multitude of different places. Okay? So, again, if we call field star, we know it's going to be that field buck who's now coming up. You know, in a sense, almost very similar to what you'd look see in an even front if we start to move guys different ways. You know, I, again, I don't think I mentioned him at the beginning, but there's some great coaches out there. Um, oh, man, uh, Ron Colley High School does this, where in a sense, you know, it's a 4-2-5 from a 3-3. Three, three. In every play, those guys, you have a three-tech, you have your one-tech, you have your five, you have your five, and again, they go and play the ball. Okay, So we try to, to have some things in, in line where we can do that, you know, in a sense, provide that even front look from the odd. Okay. Our boundary star, same thing, only from to the boundary. Um, again, if we want to bring some short side pressure, this is typically what we'll do, um, you know, particularly on a hash. Um, our slider, okay? So again, something else we took from Iowa State a few years ago is that slider technique. We use this quite a bit, um, you know, in various shifts and things. Um, but realistically, slider for us puts our nose in the two eye, okay? And we're probably reading that guard. Our ends are now going to be in a five, Okay, and a four eye, and you can guess we're probably going to be pinching the backside loop in here. We have some base calls that we will use when we look at the shift uh, to slider, but realistically, again, it's another look, another front that you that a team has to prepare for. Um, and again, you know, I like the idea of a nose being over a guard. These guys aren't used to that, right? You see the three three, and you get into your uh, your practice throughout the week, your team sessions, your indie sessions, and these guys aren't used to having someone over top of them. Okay, so they tend to get uncomfortable. Every team has the turf, okay? and that's the truth. I mean, it's whether it's your team, every program, with the exception of maybe, you know, 10 to 15 around the country, every team's got that guy who they're looking to hide. Okay? And the goal is to try to take advantage of them, you know, schematically. And I think slider often um, gives us the best opportunity, particularly when we need to see some kind of a shift. Okay, we'll also go to a tight look where we bring those stack backers up. Um, really sniffing the heels of the ends of their married end. Um, and again, that C standing for close. We will bring this up tight. We do see, like I said, some power T teams. Um, you know, this is something we've used before in the past and had some relative success with. Okay, it's not something you want to live and die in. This is a very aggressive way to play the defense. Um, but realistically, you know, if you switch it up between your loops and your pinches, again, this can create havoc for those high school tackles, which tend to be bigger kids that aren't the most mobile. Okay, so again, if a team's great at double teams, you know, maybe this isn't it for you. You have to understand whoever that loot man is. You cannot get washed down. Okay, but again, there are times where we will take one side or both sides and go to this tight look. Okay, so that's kind of our base fronts. Um, I do want to get into our base stunts, okay, our everyday stunts that we'll look to call. Um, like the fronts, I believe there's eight of them in total. Okay? I don't think we had quite that many uh, fronts. I think it's six or seven. Um, but our stunts are kind of pivotal and key to developing those windows. So depending whether we want an open or closed window to a side, um, ultimately determines our stunts. Um, you know, as a coach, I, the last couple of years I've coached from the box and it's easy to manipulate these things up top when you have a visual of what a team is doing offensively, what they're struggling with, and of course where their turd is. So we will look to, um, you know, incorporate these eight base stunts. Um, to create the windows that we want, okay? Um, you know, again, we can also check into things and of course manipulate them as needed. So let's get into them. Um, our first, you know, very first stunt we'll teach is uh, is our pinch stunt. So again, for our nose, that's a button press. 
um, heavy against the center. If you want to call him a two gap player, that's really what he's become. Hey, when we look to run our ends, we are pinching to the inside. Okay, so that's that six inch side power step, as you want to call it. We don't cross over, we don't do anything like that. Um, and of course, at this point, our eyes are now on the guard. Okay, so realistically, it's going to be tackle who's blocking down on us more often than not. Okay, but you know, if, if he's not, we know our head needs to be on that swivel. Okay, so again, um, that's kind of the stimulus we teach our ends. Ball goes away, we play flat. In this case, you know, being a pinch, if this is his near back read, that guy is going to be coming flat down the line, or at least should be. All right. Same thing goes for our bucks. We know that we read opposite the base gap. So if our ends are pinching, we know we're going to be scraping paint. Right. So we're now reading the tackle at this point. Okay. We have to be tight. The one thing you want to avoid, particularly with your freshman or JV players, is again, you know, everyone thinks the loop is real wide, like it's a pass rush. It's not. It's a constrict. Okay, you're taking on half a man, that outside clear half, I guess you could say, or the white half in this case. We know we're taking on half a man with our inside shoulder, okay, and we're looking to constrict that C gap. Okay, we don't want it to widen. So that's really kind of the point of emphasis when we get to our pinch technique that we're looking to teach to our kids. Okay, again, if you're that buck, you're reading your base gap to, of course, if play goes away, it's backside check by to say, and then you're looking for cutback. Okay, so it's kind of a, a bow. You're here, and then we're bowing and, and pursuing flat down the line of scrimmage. Okay, of course, our, our dogs outside are our boot counter reverse players. Okay, so they're there if that ball bounces back or you see that, that heavy reverse. Okay, but realistically, our backside, when we have a great backside defender, that's when we are at our best defensively because we'll get that bang bend, and, or in our case, that bend back um, you know, to the cutback. And if you're not there, it's going to be lights out. Okay, our loop technique is the second technique we teach um, in a sense to our ends. We know we're going to be looping and taking on that half man to the outside. Again, when we do this, our bucks are heavy, heavy inside fitters. Okay, again, so at this point, they're reading those guards. We know that we have to get up to our B gap, particularly if, we, particularly if we're getting flow to us, right? We see that guard go away. We're pursuing. We know where the ball is going more often than not. You know, I heard a great thing on uh, that three compete with the stack uh, podcast a couple weeks ago um, from Adam Carter down there at Grayson, you know, and it was, it was funny. He said, you know, do you read guards or do you read the backs? Okay. We're a guard reading team more often than not. Okay. And the reason is like he said, you know, the guards are like your grandma. They won't lie to you. You know, the backs like your girlfriend, they, they might lie to you from time to time. Right. So again, we teach to read the guards more often than not, they're going to take us to that play. Okay, so again, you have to have a philosophy, a fundamental philosophy on defense. That's what we like to do on the staff. Okay. Our slant call, again, um, in this case, we're no longer that two gap team. We're just single gap. Um, we are looking to uh, slant our nose to the strength, our, our ends to the strength as well. So we'll get a pinch on the backside um, to what is you know our strong side. In this case, the field side, we're going to get a loop technique and those bucks are going to respond accordingly. Okay, so we know in this case, we have the open window to the right. We know we have to insert whenever we see some action, right? You got to go set your wall. Okay, our backside's a little bit different here. We know we could be a little bit slower flow. We're getting a heavy pinch here to the or, or towards the, uh, the offset back. Um, so again, we could be a little bit slower flow if we're seeing some kind of zone read coming across, some kind of power read. We can kind of stay home, account for the quarterback, and then, of course, account for that check line to say, um, if we see some kind of cutback from the running back or the queue. Okay, so again, we have to understand when we have a loop technique, we can be a little bit slower um, as opposed to our, our, our right side in this case, where we have to really fit hard to that B gap. Okay, that allows us to create the biggest bow, um, you know, and to string some of these plays out. Okay, um, our angle. So again, for us, angle is just opposite of slant. Angle means we are all angling back towards uh, the weak side. Okay? If we have a, a rip call in this case, our strength being right, we know where our defensive line is now taking the gap to the left. Okay? So again, we like to use angle quite a bit. Um, it's a nice change up. Often, at least in this case, you know, centers tend to be right-handed. So putting our nose towards that right side of the center um, or, uh, you know, our defensive left, their offensive right really gives us a strategic advantage. It's hard for that kid often to get the hand up in time. Um, so again, we'll look to angle 
um, particularly when we see some spread teams quite a bit. Same thing with, with power and wing T teams as well. But again, really just works opposite the slant. Okay, uh, slam. So again, if we want to create a bulge, you know, history teacher, you know, you think about like battle of the bulge, what it looks like. You're trying to create a bow in the offense. Um, we can slant our nose to a particular direction. Okay, so slam allows us to slant our nose towards the strength. Okay, it's pretty simple. We know it's still just going to be a pinch technique for our ends. So we're creating those closed windows for our stack backers. Um, they know what their stimulus is. They know what they're looking at. In this case, the tackle. Okay, and we're looking to force this ball to bounce outside. Okay, so again, if you're a spill team, to me, this uh, this particular stunt has been great for us. Okay, same thing goes. Uh, the opposite of slam is wham. Okay, again, our nose now is angling back towards the weak side, okay, away from the, uh, the the strength call. So we know those same keys, same reads for our bucks. Same things for our ends, who are going to be pinching and taking that uh, that B gap, forcing the closed window. Okay, the only difference is now our bulge will come to the weak side as opposed to the, uh, the strength, right? So again, kind of all the rules stay the same, and that's why these calls have worked effectively for us. Uh, very simple, very easy, okay? And then, of course, our, our loop calls uh, where we slant our nose, we use square, okay? So square, of course, tells our nose to go towards the strength, okay? We're really attacking that what is our strong side A gap. Okay, um, really forcing these guys to create the double, communicate, and of course, manipulating our window. Okay, again, in this case, we're getting the loop technique from both of our ends. Okay, again, that changes our cross key if we're facing spread team. Um, it changes our key a little bit as well if we are um, seeing wing T or some kind of power based team. Okay, but again, very, very simple. Our bucks know we're now we are reading B again. Okay, and then our last of our base stunts is what we call wheel. So again, wheels essentially the same thing as our, uh, as the previous call, but we know our nose is now going towards the weak side. Okay, so nothing crazy difficult here, guys. Uh, you know the reason we use these calls is we can teach them in the off season. You can draw it up on a board. Kids can know where to go. It's also something you can do to set up five trash cans. You know, if kids are going to work out by themselves individually. Um, you know, and they want to teach these. You know, learn these techniques. It, it, it's extremely simple for them. Right, you have to know your front, okay, where you're aligning pre-snap. You have to know if there's any kind of pre-snap stemming or movement, and then you have to know where you're going. Okay, so our kids know I'm now technically responsible for that C gap. I'm looking to constrict the C, or my nose might say I'm I'm responsible for that weak side slanting towards that weak side A. This is my gap. I have I have to control it. Okay, so again, that's kind of how we teach our base stunts. Okay. Um, the last thing I want to do is kind of get into some film. Um, you know, again, I know everyone uh, does things a little bit different, but uh, I'd like to show some film to show you what works, possibly what doesn't. You know, so again, um, just some of the things that we've utilized. This is an example of our curveball angle call. I'll try to uh, try to maximize some of this. Again, we want to force the ball to bounce. When we see guys running horizontally, that's a good thing. Again, getting guys to the ball. Um, that's always a positive, right? So again, kind of going back to what we were saying, you know, you want to make sure you're around the ball. Uh, kind of our tight pinch, okay? So when we want to get tight, we see a power T team. Uh, try to run this back real quick. Again, we're going to be pinching, trying to force that ball to bounce. You know, if quarterback does have it, we're accounting for him. You know, being an old Veer guy, I think it's, it's extremely sound to be defensively sound in what you do. Okay, again, they want to run some trap or something in the middle. We're there, right? We have guys accounting for the B and the A gap. Okay, so again, it's important you know your opponent, and and of course how those stunts and those manipulations will affect what you do compared to what they do. So our stack slant, okay, with a little bit of an edge pressure. Okay, again, we do of course bring edge pressure off the edge, just like every other team. Okay, so again, in this case, we kind of break our own tendencies. We look to loop towards the field. Okay, I think it's some kind of, uh, yep, looks like a slant. And of course, we're bringing uh, pressure off the edge. Okay, Again, probably something we saw in a game plan. But again, we try to disguise things as much as possible. Of course, get home real quick, force a high school quarterback to make a hasty decision. Um, hopefully, that's one that, you know, ends up working out for us. Okay, Kind of star pinch. Okay, So we'll bring some pressure from the field here again. Um, star for us, remember, is that close alignment from our bucks. Okay, we end up bringing one, we end up dropping another, okay, forcing a, a hasty throw into our cover three. Um, you know, guess what? Again, it works 
ends up working out well for us. Okay. Um, some other looks. Okay. So stack slam. Okay. This is kind of a heavy package from a spread team. Um, let's see it. Okay. Remember slam for us tells our nose to slant towards the strength. Okay. We're now getting those, those gaps. And, and, and despite the fact, you know, they seem to have us outnumbered quite a bit in terms of size, you know, we're able to penetrate and make a play for, you know, a minimal gain or, or even a loss of one or two in this case. Okay. Our weak star. Okay. So we're walking that guy up and, and frankly, he's not quite close enough. Um, you know, very, very new player, only played two years in high school. Um, but again, he's playing that, that weak buck for us. They were able to bring him. Okay. End up getting home um, pretty quickly. Okay. So again, just another look that we like to use um, in order to create some pressure. Curveball pinch. Okay. So we can align outside. Okay. And then our, you know, we ask our defensive ends in a sense to be agile enough to where, of course, they can still play ball. So we're lined up in that five technique and we're actually pinching inside. Okay. And last but not least up for this particular thing, our stack angle. So we know we are angling back towards the boundary in this case, and we'll bring some edge pressure with it as well. Okay, so I apologize for the grainy film. Um, but again, you're trying to get home as quickly as possible. We do that by manipulating the windows, right? So a lot of teams might slant in this case towards the field. Um, we do the opposite. We look to go inside here, bring some pressure. Why? Because we know we're bringing pressure off the edge. Try to get home, um, you know, switch some some things up, run some man coverage behind it. Okay. I think I have one more thing uh, of clips here. So we'll run some curveball wham. Okay. Pretty simple. Uh, use some, some back footage here. How we look to fit that gap. You know, again, against some zone teams, wham is great because, again, we know we're put, taking that nose. We're fitting them here. Okay. Um, you know, towards that weak side, which gives our Mike that real open, clear window. And if he's our best defender, our quickest defender, we want to get him then. Now he needs to be tighter. He needs to get downhill. I'm sure he got reamed out and filmed for that. Um, but again, the goal is to get downhill inside out to that first available window. Uh, curveball wham with some mic pressure. Okay. So we will occasionally blitz our mic again, him being a, usually a typically pretty fast player. Uh, we'll look to bring him again, creating that bow. And then playing flat down the line of scrimmage. So that's the backside buck we're coming to make that play. We're in that curveball look. He's penetrating, penetrating, penetrating. And then, of course, our Mike's able to rally, get off his block, and ultimately make the tackle. Okay, some more edge pressures. Um, we love to bring them, um, especially, obviously, in passing situations. That gives us a huge advantage. Okay, so it's a little bit soft, but a little difficult to see. Um, but, again, bringing some pressure off the edge forcing those high school tackles or those number two slot receivers to kind of block that it's it's a tough ask and again you're trying to get their quickest way from point a to point b is, is a straight line okay? and that's what we teach you know focusing on outside leverage okay um another tight look this is when we look the loop okay so we know our end's gonna loop well he, he got looped he got walled here absolutely destroyed on a down block okay um by the by what is their tight end Okay, but realistically, we're able to create a ball shear, get in the backfield, and make a, a you know a tackle for a gain of one. Okay, and again, when you're playing a power T team, that, that's huge, right? You want to try to get those those yards to be three or less each time. Okay, so again, you know, I'm sure there's some more clips I could show you. I might even had another slide in there. I might have skipped past it. I apologize if I did. Um, but again, you know, this is my information. Um, if you guys you know want to reach out at any time, feel free. Um, you know, realistically for me, guys, uh, you know, I love to share ideas, you know, feel free to DM, call, whatever it has to be, um, you know, first and foremost, or I guess should say last, I suppose, I hope everyone is, uh, is safe this season. It's been a unique one. Um, and I hope uh, you guys have a successful season. That's it for me. Thank you, Coach Banstra, for the opportunity.